Welcome to ASP Stuff Radio, the one show out of over 150,000 internet radio shows or podcasts on the planet Earth. That's pretty sad. But we're unique because we talk about stuff like cow farts and cats with the Zika virus and the neck jowl of Lawrence Krauss. Today is Saturday, February 4th. I'm Albert Joseph Felice III, known as uh, Costa Climacus. Joining me today is a brilliant stuff analyst, Stephen Gerard Felice. Hello. Hello, hello, hello out there to the world. Yes. In Brazil. The world. Shout out to Brazil. Brazil. Woohoo. You Ooh, have. Yeah. You've reached. You're now ahead of uh, Indonesia in, in terms of listening to ASP Stuff Radio. I think they're well ahead of Indonesia. Yeah. We only have one listener in Indonesia. I guess. Well, two. Gita, Gita dropped. Or, no, it's still just Gita and Heideko, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, cats have contracted the Zika virus. I, I, think so. I didn't know that. I think the Zika virus was uh, originally discovered in a cat inside mm. the cat prostate. Yeah. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think that's on the news. <laughs> so, how did it transmit from a cat to a hey, where, where's, human? Where's Paul? Uh, he's on assignment. Right uh, he's now. on assignment. Paul's on assignment. Okay. He's doing investigative journalism um, out in Brazil, actually. He's uh, wow, investigating he's the to... Zika virus. Well, that's not safe. You got to be careful, Paul. <laughs> Where in the world is Paula Felice? Where in the world is Paula Felice? Oh, uh, oh, we're giving out our real names? Oh, I mean... Uh, yeah. oh. Uh, yeah. so, so I have so, I yeah. have a, a a little a letter actually from uh, Gita. Gita is listening, so one listening. of the two listeners in, in Indonesia, and she's very interested. So yeah. she still writes us. Yeah, she does. She just wanted to make a quick little shout out to you. Actually, she to says, me. "Yeah, she says, uh, hello, ASP Stuff Radio. I still listen to show." You make me laugh. Uh, I I almost forgot it was uh, Stephen's birthday the other day. Mm. Me and my friends uh, sing a little song for you. Perhaps mm. I can send to Albert so he can play on the show. Okay. <laughs> Thank you and keep up the good work. All right. They're, so they say happy birthday. Eh? Gita and I guess three of her friends got together to say just a quick little. Happy birthday to you, Stephen. Uh, you're popular. All Seems right. Pretty let's, nice. Pretty nice. Gita and the, and the crew. All right. Let's, let's, let me, let's see. Here it is. Gita, happy birthday clip. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Stephen. Happy birthday to you. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Thank you. Man. <laughs> Gita's not from Indonesia. She's uh, from uh, the Planet X. From <laughs> Planet X? Yeah. Oh, man. That's uh, uh, interesting. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know. She, very talented she's Gita. She's an alien. Yeah. <laughs> G- Geet is uh, an alien from yeah. the Planet X. Uh, interesting. Well, she did have other people with her to sing, so maybe that's why the chorus was a little off. Sound like there were 15 other people. Yeah. <laughs> Aliens. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much, Gita and the crew. Yep, I'll be sure to let her know that you are <laughs> much uh, obliged. Does, does Gita know Heideko? I don't know. Maybe uh, they're brothers and sisters. Maybe he was in the chorus in or the maybe, back. Maybe Gita is uh, Haidako and Haidako is Gita. They could be playing a trick on us, yeah. yeah. So what's going on in the world? Oh, wait, you asked about the cats and the Zika virus and how... Yeah, I the, thought you were joking about cats contracting the... Well, why not make up crap? I mean, isn't that what uh, the media does? Just makes up random yeah. shit for the public to consume and believe? Yeah, so those some of those clips, news clips, you think they're all made up? The ones that I sent you? Well, I, I don't know. Some of the stuff that uh, they talk about. Uh, how the Zika virus was uh, man-made to begin with? Yeah, and I didn't have a chance to read that. So what is what is it saying? Well, 
first of all, we need to understand what the what's the story that the media is shoving down in our throats. So you know, if you're average Joe. Okay, I'm redneck Joe. Redneck Joe, do you turn on Fox News or NBC or ABC or Probably CBS? Fox News. Or Fox News, okay, and then you, you know, what would you? How would you interpret the story? So I'm hearing that there's these little babies that have micro heads or something. Is that what I'm hearing about, or I'm just hearing about some virus spreading around the world? So this Joe Redneck will think, oh shit, there's a mosquito out there that you know infects people with a virus that causes babies to uh, have their heads shrink. And di- didn't we see one of those people in at UC Irvine? You uh, remember that a person with a shrunken head? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, that remember was, that? That I was I was kind of freaked out or scared. Uh, well, you remember that? It's a little insulting though. And what's who's to say? Well, I mean, not, not I'm not trying to be insulting, but when you when you see somebody with a micro head, it's it's it just kind of takes you uh, takes you aback. Takes right? you a back. It makes yeah. you go. Oh! Yeah, you don't. Uh, you're not expecting it. Well, that's how. Maybe, maybe if I was expecting. That students are taken aback when I walk into the first day when I'm going to teach philosophy. Why is that? Because I'm young and brown, and most philosophy professors are old and white. Well, it's a different type of being taken aback. I mean, it's more like, whoa, whoa, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, not, 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 not trying to be insulting, but it's just you can't help but react that way, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. If you see something, maybe like you see an accident on the on, on the freeway, and you see something you shouldn't have seen, you're rubbernecking, and you're like, yeah, yeah, you know? like so. It, it, it's not a pretty sight to see these babies with their heads or brains sh- shrunk. Have you? Did you see it? it? Deformed. Yeah. There's pictures and oh. video. I haven't even tried. You it haven't yet. even looked. It's on the, so I don't have cable, so I don't know, you know, if you watch no, TV. No, you're probably just on the internet. On the internet, but I, I don't have cable. I don't watch TV. I, all the news that I get is on the internet, so I don't know what's being uh, propagated out there and through the TV, the tube. But So it's a little horrifying when you so, see these babies. Yeah, but what, what, what is, I mean, do you, what's the news uh, on the TV? Portraying? Well, I'm, I don't watch the TV. I don't watch the tube. You don't either. watch the tube either. But I watch what I, I just listen. I listen to the radio, so that's okay. where I get my source of news. Most people might know my source is NPR. That's my main source. NPR source. What does NPR say about the Zika virus? Because we need to deconstruct this and find out what the hell's going on. In my opinion, NPR is pretty objective, but most people think maybe it's liberal or whatever. Yeah. But what they've been reporting is. I think somewhere in Africa. I don't know exactly where. Um, or Brazil. I think Brazil. Or it's Brazil. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Brazil. Uh, babies have been being born with uh, microencephalia. Micro, yeah, microcephaly. Yeah. So en- encephaly meaning uh, brain, uh, pertaining to the brain, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. So you have a micro brain. Yeah. Micro brain! And. Um, they, for a while, were trying to figure out what could be the cause. Supposedly, the cause was some Mos- mosquitoes. Mosquito, a mosquito, virus. So, just out of nowhere, just boop, came out from some fourth dimension, right? A wormhole tore open inside the universe, and these mosquitoes just decided to uh, infect little kids in Brazil. So, mosquito yeah. is causing brain shriek and shrink. Well, it's not just from biting any people it's from mothers that were bitten and then they right were are infected with the virus and then the kids that are born have these uh symptoms of microencephaly mm-hmm. right so yeah. it's you, you you don't get a micro brain from getting bit right you you get it from being born uh from a mother that has been infected from the virus that's right. what we're being fed yeah right? is, that, is that what npr is feeding you that's what I'm being fed. Okay, so NPR is feeding you the standard story that's being uh, exposed to the public from other news. Uh, yeah, so it's, it, it, it aligns. I'm assuming yeah. with uh, what you're hearing, what you're 
internet source is saying. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, what and then what I'm reading. Well, first of all, the Zika virus, and I was talking to our father, who is a pathologist. He's a doctor, and he told our me that father. our father, our father. Do you, do you want to say a prayer our now? Father. Our father, our who father, art who art in heaven. Our father. <laughs> So, our father... Please clap. (laughs) Who says that? Please clap. Is that that Obama? That's uh, our good old Jeb Noodle Bush. That was the most wet noodly thing, but we'll get that. Oh, man, I didn't didn't watch it. You didn't watch that? What's wrong with you, son? (laughs) Jesus, mother Christ. (laughs) The wet noodliest clip. You are retarded for not watching that clip. Hmm. Okay, so... Ah, I gotta, I gotta inform my own uh, guest on the sh- ASP stuff wait, wait, radio. Wait, wait. But, but in welcome my defense, to ASP stuff radio, where I have def- to tell my guests what's going on. This in my, in my defense, clap. you sent the text in the middle of the day, right? And I'm happy three to days ago, and I was in the middle of work, right? And I don't want to be watching some YouTube. A uh, noodle video <laughs> and having people listen to this noodle video. Okay, noodle. but you had other the remaining twenty four hours of the day, or whatever. and then you just forget. Okay, you know, I don't know. So if you sent it maybe at night, yeah, I'd be able to open up right away. All right, that's your excuse. Yeah, I okay. got an excuse. Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, so father tells us our pathologist of a father told us that the Zika virus has been around for. Uh, millennia a while (laughs) for a while i I don't i mean maybe i'm guessing what it's 2016 uh 70 years approximately 70 years okay that's that's a long time uh there's no doubt that there is a so-called zika virus it was in fact uh extracted from uh, a monkey Rhesus monkey, Rhesus pieces monkey. <laughs> so, so a monkey that eats a lot of a monkey that ate a lot of Rhesus uh, pieces. Chocolate. Okay, make sure you know that that's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> Cats get the Zika virus in their prostate, and and the monkeys get the Zika from the Rhesus pieces. So so now we can't eat Rhesus pieces. Yeah, don't eat your fucking Rhesus pieces. <laughs> don't eat them. Now you and, okay. and since Brazil is our most popular country, they're going to be. Listen to this now. All those Brazilians—they're <laughs> so going to stop eating Reese's pieces. Stop eating Reese's pieces. I have to make a note to our audience. I just drank a lot of coffee, so I'm a little extra hyper. There you go. Um, uh, um, very hyper. You want to know how hyper I am? I'm as hyper as Hillary Clinton, who won the goddamn cock kiss. I am a better candidate, and thanks to you, I will be a better president. I hope you will go. I hope you will stand up for me. I hope you will fight for me. And I promise you this, I will stand up and fight for you every single day of this campaign. And then when we win, I will fight for you in the White House. Thank you, and God bless you. (laughs) She's got the Zika virus. It sounds like she's been infected. (laughs) Woo! <laughs> That's what intense. happens when you get the Zika virus. She's just on a roll there. So she, she had just, some coffee too. And some cocaine just snorted it. <laughs> 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 cocaine with uh, four shots, five shots of espresso. Injected inside her testicles. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. All right. So anyway, going back to the Zika virus. So the, the Zika virus is... It's claimed it was discovered inside uh, the body of a rhesus monkey. Okay. Um, now, of course, the monkey was probably infected by a mosquito. I can't remember the species, what it was called, some Adatus, Egyptico, something, whatever. So, <clears throat> it's a real virus, okay? It causes uh, something similar to yellow fever, dang fever, ding, dung, dang fever, dung fever, fever, dung fever okay. malaria, whatever. Now, you know, it caused some deaths here and there, now and then, throughout since 1940-something up until, well, obviously now. But here's the thing. Scientists, bioengineers, uh, tried to figure out a way to uh, get rid of dengue fever. 
mm-hmm. and they yeah. decided to genetically mm-hmm. modify uh, mosquitoes to somehow counteract dengue fever. Okay. Um, and this was uh, occurred in 2012 when they decided to release these mosquitoes in, I believe it was R- Brazil. Um, and over time, the mosquitoes evolved. They learned how to adapt. Um, I think they were... 75% of the antibiotics just were excreted. <clears throat> mm. And so they're, they're able to adapt. Uh, the strong survive, right? They're able to- And they to, reproduced. They reproduced. And when, what ended up happening is that some of these genetically modified mosquitoes are now uh, intense and they're, they're, they got superpowers and they're now capable of infecting uh, women so that they're- newborns um, produce defective or deformed brains or heads. That's what causes the microbrains. So this is a result of uh, calculated, uh, biologically, genetically modified bugs that happen to backfire. Um, And of course, this isn't going to be released to the public. The media doesn't want people to know that this was just an experiment gone wrong. Um, So they're just going to say, oh, these mosquitoes cause brains to shrink. Yeah, well, I mean, it, they want to keep you in the in the in the dark on this stuff, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I, I don't know. You could believe that too, and but you can't just come up. The yeah, Zika virus doesn't come out of the blue. Yeah, again. just like ISIS doesn't exist out of some random butthole in the universe. Okay, mm-hmm. doesn't exist. Nothing exists in a in a vacuum. There's mm-hmm. a context. From which anything arises, okay? Right? Yeah. Yeah, so it could have happened. You could have, like, you know, like the movies, you have X-Men, mutant humans, and then you have mutant mosquitoes. Yeah, mutant mosquitoes, mutant bugs. Yeah. Um, now, okay, so these are. Genet- I mean, it, but this you're saying it was intentional well, or it was just. Well, that's the ac- that's that's the conspiracy. Whether it's intentional or not, that's that's debatable. But what's not debatable is that these bugs were genetically modified. Now, here's the other story. Another source is saying that okay, it could be due to a vaccine. Um, so so the other story is that these mosquitoes were genetically modified to help treat dengue fever. Okay. And uh, they were trying to use vaccines um, to treat infected patients uh, that were bitten by these genetically modified mosquitoes. And then somehow there was an adverse reaction from the vaccine and these genetically modified bugs. And and that's what's creating uh, deformities in some Children Now, not all. So, that's the other thing. You have to note that there were about 4,000 cases of the Zika virus in Brazil and only 400 or so with, with newborn infants who, who were suffering from microcephaly. So, not all of them. So, you have to wonder, you know, if, no one really knows what's causing these brains to shrink. Okay. So, you can't really say it's the Zika virus, which is what the media is telling the public. Um, so, that that's... You know, well, there, there, erroneous now, information. Now, that, other stuff that you're being fed is that there are studies, scientific studies, that can somehow correlate uh, the Zika virus to uh, microencephaly. Right. 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 So that that's that's part of what we're being fed as well. Yeah. So whether it's true or not, and and. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, right? You try to put the pieces together. Now, now this is in the media. This is a news story. Whether we should be worried about it or not, I don't know. That's debatable because it it really only impacts a small part of the world population. I don't know. I mean, is it an epidemic? It's not an epidemic. Not yet, but there's already a, a case that was two days ago discovered in Texas. Then there were several in Florida. Okay. Um, and then one in New Zealand, right? And then and, in Europe, and, and the, but the chances of you getting this virus at this point, I'm is, afraid. Okay, the media is trying to make me afraid. But you're scared, yeah, right? So they're freaking you out, right? I'm, I, 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 I'm scared. I, I don't want to have babies. I, I don't want to reproduce. So that okay? that's part of the the media feeding you stuff it, is to get you all all excited about this. 
Yep. See? So that that's part of uh, the media feeding you. That's part of the piece um, that they, they do want you to freak out and pay attention, right? Yeah. So, um, but the other point I was going to make is, so this has now been out in the media, but since it's recently come out, what has it been, two months or a month? Maybe no more than a month that you've been hearing about, been being fed this story, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, that's that's not enough time to do scientific experiments and be conclusive on um, mosquitoes being the cause of microencephaly. Yeah. There, there's no way, there's, that's, a month is not enough time. No. So but, if you are hearing that there's these uh, experiments that have verified the correlation between the virus and microencephaly, that had to have been going on for quite some time. So there has there has to have been some history. Yeah. Built up, right? Yeah, there 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 is a history. Yeah. Um now assuming these you know news stories in the heart of the web, right? The stuff that's not going to be in the media. If assuming these stories are true, you have to you have to wonder is is vaccination or is developing a vaccine the smart thing to do right because if vaccines um contributed to microencephaly in some newborn infants then imagine what you know an additional vaccine might do you know are we gonna have another situation where things go out of control another backfire you know, where, okay, the vaccine in combination with these genetically modified bugs and who knows what long-term effects these vaccines yeah, will have. Maybe they're covering the too, story. Maybe it's the vaccine. You're looking at it too black, back, black and white here. How is it black and white? Okay. Look, look. Maybe yeah. the microencephaly was the byproduct, byproduct of a vaccination. And so what scientists want to do now to uh, get rid of the Zika virus is another vaccination. Are we not... Okay, are we saying that all vaccinations are bad? Some vaccinations... Okay, some or all? No, I'm just saying some. Okay, so this... Obviously, not all cases of vaccinations are are detrimental. Uh, Okay, like they... So there's some, a few, many, most, and all. Like, not all, not most, not many, a few. Okay, so this one is one that would be bad, and... You're saying because there was one that was already made mm-hmm. and it wasn't any good, therefore we shouldn't use it. We shouldn't try to develop one. Well, not that. No, see, I'm just saying we got We have to be I careful. Wanna, we I have to know be. What you're trying to say? I'm trying to say, if vaccination is the re- is the reason why some of these newborn infants were suffering from microencephaly, we have to understand the root cause. Like what dirty ingredient? Soot or root? Root. Root cause. Soot. 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 Suck it in. Sucking in soot. So, no, I'm just saying we have to find out. So scientists ha- need yeah. to take this seriously. Find out the particular strand or, or the genetic okay. component uh, that okay. was... Too- I get, I, okay, now, because before it sounded like you're saying, oh, we shouldn't. No, develop. didn't I say, I prefaced before, I said, you know, it makes you wonder. You have to be concerned about, okay, if we're going to use vaccinations to treat the Zika virus... We need to be careful because if vaccination was what caused the microencephaly, then we need to be sure. And, and what is driving you to believe that they wouldn't be careful? Or, or well, okay, whoever's developing wouldn't be careful. And who is developing? Well, right? we have to understand the motivations, the ulterior motives, the money involved. You know, we should look at stocks. Do they go up in value the past couple months that were involved in the pharmaceuticals or the bio? Uh, pharmaceutical industry i think everything is just down right now right <laughs> yeah it's everything just in in the barrels yeah, yeah. everything's uh, at the uh sewer level yeah. su- level right now right yeah pretty much but, but so so yeah oh, so you're saying it's is to profit but wh- I don't where know. do we live we live in the u.s of a capitalism rules of course but, it, uh, of course they're going to try to drive it as they need this virus out there now the other conspiracy theory could be population control, wipe out non-white human beings. Hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> but how would you control uh, these mosquitoes? Would you genetically modify them so that... Bio-warfare, my friend. 
This is just so, another. Well, you you could technically genetically modify these uh, the Zika virus or it, these. It, it could be. Z- look, look, my my friend, my young Earthling. <laughs> the government could be genetically modifying every aspect of human existence: the air, the water, the food. Okay, so you're eating shit processed food from the government that was produced by Monsanto. In the long-term effects, suppose you develop a, a, a kidney disorder or cancer or something wrong with your eye. You can't rule out that maybe the reason why you developed this disease is because of all the shit that you've been eating produced by the government. Genetically right. modified crap. So it doesn't I, I just agree. have to be bugs. It could be the food that okay, you're eating. Okay, but nobody's arguing the, 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 that. I'm the not shit inside. Okay. So, and then... Now you're you're getting to is everything that's genetically modified is that bad, is is bad, right? Not assuming. Okay, if there's an ulterior motive, if the, if their intent is to depopulate the world, yes, it's bad, right? The okay. intention is to harm the public. If it's to, um, you know. If the reason why they're genetically modifying food or animals is so they can uh, wipe out, you know, insects that are eating their crop or, you know, they have good reasons, you know, to maintain their business, uh, to make it, you know, last longer on the shelf. And and then and then listen to that TED talk that I text you weeks ago, because that'll talk about a little about a little bit about plant yeah. genetically okay. modified now, food. I'm not I'm not going to, you know, throw out a blanket turn or a bold claim and say that all genetically modified things are bad. They could, they, I mean, but the thing is, I'm not going to conclude that therefore they're safe because that would be an appeal to ignorance. Right? Okay. That's like me saying, hey, uh, purple unicorns with uh, uh, orange um, eyelashes do exist. And okay. the reason why they do exist is because you can't prove that I'm wrong. All right. So, so anyways, you're getting at... Uh, if if these mosquitoes were genetically modified to kill off brown people, then it's wrong. Wait, say that again. If so, you're you're saying that it's possible that these mosquitoes were oh. put out there to kill off brown folk. It's possible that that it's a race so specific disease. How would you ever find that out, though? Well, why is it occurring in Brazil and Africa and other third world countries and not, say, the United States of America or the Rockefeller family? They happen to be third world countries. Huh? They are third world countries. It's not happening in Europe. It's not happening in the United States of America. Doesn't the United States of America, don't we have... uh, It's only happening to these baby popping uh, third world countries. Yeah, or they don't introduce. Maybe we contracept- have means of controlling diseases in the U.S. of A. Let's let's let me let's listen to some clips, okay? Let's listen to some clips about right. the Zika virus. Certainly, you are following the news about the outbreak of the Zika virus all over Brazil, and the official version given by the Brazilian government and advertised 24 by 7 by mainstream media is that the virus is getting spread by a strain of the so-called dengue fever mosquito, which is allegedly being fought by a genetically modified strain of the same species, engineered by Oxitec, a British biotech company balls deep in the business of genetically modified bugs. But what definitely you won't be seeing on TV, is that the Zika virus was patented, by the Rockefeller Foundation circa 1947. What totally contradicts the government's health ministry version that the outbreak started with infected tourists. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist, to realize that such virus might as well be a product of laboratory, spread by a strain of mosquito as much engineered, as the one that's supposed to be fighting it. Alright, so there's some guys talking in another language. Something else the TV won't definitely tell you, is that there's also this gigantic possibility of the Zika virus be spread by mandatory vaccines, manufactured and distributed by Bill Gates Foundation, 
especially the polio vaccine, mostly in third world countries, whose governments keep a partnership with such foundation for over 10 years. And the odds are, that the vaccines produced in Brazil, very likely are the same ones that caused an outbreak of residual paralysis in India, which killed over 47,000 people in that country. And I'm having a very hard time believing this is coincidence, especially considering the ongoing Illuminati program for global depopulation, and the Bill Gates Foundation might as well be deliberately distributing contaminated vaccines in third world countries. Now the world today has 6.8 billion people, that's headed up to about 9 billion. Now if we do a really great job on new vaccines, healthcare, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Hmm. So who's this deep voice? Man, that's <laughs> they try to. That's what thing, the one thing I don't like about this video. It's just a scare tactic, you know, with the uh, 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 dramatic music in the background. But so can I just make some bold claims about some famous rich guy and then people will be scared as well? I mean, I, it's no different than what the governments are doing this this the, uh, the conspiracy whatever. yeah this conspiracy theorist or theor the people who are spreading that mm -hmm. particular clip i mean it's no different i mean do they have any proof okay so uh i sent you a text this morning where it says okay so i don't know let's assume this is true but the rockefeller uh foundation owns a patent on the zika virus huh okay uh, what is a patent? Uh, a patent on the Zika virus or the vaccine? J just in general, what what would that entail? What, 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 what they are it? they own the rights. They own the rights. Well, why the fuck would anyone anyone want to own the rights to a virus? I mean, I didn't even know there were rights to a virus. Exactly. Are there rights to a virus? <laughs> I don't know. Is it? But uh, if they so, own so the who rights, owns the rights to HIV? I don't know. And but, who's spreading it? Why? So is there another rich guy out there that owns the rights to HIV who's spreading it to control the world population? Probably. Is that what this guy's saying? I didn't realize there were patents to a virus. But I know apparently, there's patents to uh, technologies. Well, there's a patent for the virus. You can own a virus. So therefore, uh, these rich white guys can do as they please. With so that, that to me it's in itself is is frightening that you could own a patent to a virus yeah if that's even true now right. i would i would imagine i think you mean patent to a vaccine no patent to the virus uh, look well, at the then, link I then sent if that's true and maybe we should uh, tell our listeners that start finding out if people own patents to a virus because if that's the case then why not uh, mm -hmm. try to control the population yeah. So we, what we want our listeners to understand is we're, we're not trying to spout out conspiracy theories or, you know, we're, we're just trying to let you know that there are other explanations, possible explanations to a story, to a, a particular phenomenon or event that's going on in the world. Don't believe everything that, that ABC, Fox News or NBC or CBS or NPR or uh, mm tells you right it's okay. all scripted for one thing yes um but you know at the same time these so-called conspiracy theories th these are these are other alternate versions of one and the same uh story or event we just right. don't know the origins or what's really going on so here's this is from a a clip um from the website called uh infowars Okay, and uh, the guy, the the host, has a guest, a professor, who's going to explain a little bit more about the Zika virus. Professor Francis Anthony Boyle, uh, sir, thank you so much for joining us. Well, uh, Alex, thank you very much for having me on, and my best to your viewing audience. Thank you, sir. You've got the floor. Go ahead and tell us uh, what you think's going on here. Well, of course, uh, I have no inside information. Uh, I've just been dealing with reputable news media sources uh, from around the world, but it, it does seem to me and to others, uh, another expert friend of mine, that 
what we are dealing with here is some type of um, bio-warfare agent that has been uh, genetically modified, GMO. Um, so for that reason, you really can't believe anything the WHO, the Pan American Health Organization, uh, the CDC um, is telling you. Uh, it also appears, as, as you correctly point out, that uh, Gates uh, was involved in this. Um, you know, Bill Engel has the book on Gates that he's he's basically a, a genocidalist. Um, he does have people uh, on his staff with experience uh, having done what I call death science, life scientists who do bio-warfare uh, work. Um it appears that um, the uh, U.S. Advanced Biowarfare Facility at Galveston uh, was involved. It also appears that the uh, 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 BSL-4 facility at Colorado State that works uh, with GMOing uh, mosquitoes was involved, and that um, uh, this uh, British high-tech firm, Oxitec, was involved. What is what is uh, critical here is that uh, I believe it was the summer of 2004, a, uh, there was a scholarly paper published saying that these uh, genetically modified uh, mosquitoes could be dangerous if they were released. And despite this knowledge, they were released both in uh, Brazil and also in Colombia. Uh, deliberately and maliciously. Now, why Brazil and Colombia? Brazil, you, he, you hit the uh, Atlantic coast uh, of Latin America, and Colombia, you hit the uh, Pacific coast of Latin America, and you set off a pandemic. So as of now, uh, I, I think that's what's going on. I'll continue to monitor the situation and, you know, act in accordance with the um, uh, best information I have. But uh, I uh, don't think you should trust anything the CDC, the WHO, uh, the Pan American Health Organization is telling you. Uh, they're all in cahoots with Gates. The Brazilian government is uh, in cahoots with Gates. They're all up to their eyeballs in this stuff. Um, uh, right now, I personally would not be traveling down to um, Latin America. Okay, so so this guy is saying that this is intentionally trying to depopulate a particular region of the world. Okay. Please I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who to believe. Yeah, no one knows what to believe. I mean, you just have to make your own educated decision. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to find out, go and do your own research. You got to dig. You got to dig. But a lot of people dig. see, a lot of Americans are just too goddamn busy to dig and, and to discover the truth, right? You turn on the TV, you see these, you know, uh, fake robotic human beings smiling in today's news, blah, 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 blah. You know, they're just going to tell you the superficial version of a story. A mosquitoes biting people and causing babies' brains to shrink. Um, don't have sex. Uh, be scared. Wear mm. insect repellent. Get your vaccine mm. and eat your yeah, meat. whatever. Eat your makes, meat. Hey, whatever makes them a, a dollar bill, y'all. So uh, they got to make some money, you know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyways, so do we, have, we do we have a lighter side to the show? Oh, you want to? Woo! We want a lighter side. Okay. <laughs> Too much darkness. Dark. Getting, it's always dark. getting depressed. Dark. All the right. darkness of the world. <laughs> the world is ending. Uh. Well, let let's. Do you want to talk about uh, what's going on in the cock kiss? <laughs> okay. Do you have any clips about uh, the cock? Well, kiss? first of all, who won? Ted Cruz. Woo! -hoo! Good job, Carpet Cruz. Bombing. We love you, Carpet Cruz. Carpet bombing. <laughs> Carpet bombing cruise. Carpet bombing cruise. Carpet bombing cruise. Carpet bombing cruise. <laughs> uh, we can't 
evangelical. Yeah, he's got a very annoying voice. <laughs> but did you hear that? So, uh, so, first of all, how the hell did Trump lose? Uh, he uh, didn't take it very seriously. Didn't he make fun of Iowa? Cruz? Iowans? Or uh, Trump? Yeah. He also made fun of uh, uh, second place winners, that they're losers. So, therefore, Trump is a loser because he came in second place. No, but the, not Trump can't be a second place loser no. because it's not quite decided yet. Nobody's won anything yet. Yeah, that's true. To, but yeah. I, I did you hear about the, I don't know, something with the Cruz and Carson and Trump story that the reason why Ted Cruz won was because Carson, uh, the, the, the people involved in Cruz's campaign released to the public uh, false information about Ben Carson dropping out of the race altogether and that all the people who support Carson need to vote for Ted Cruz because Carson's out. So we want your vote to count. Uh, don't vote for a... Uh, Is that an article or yeah, here's, media yeah, here's I, got, I got a clip to uh -huh. play. So here we go. Tonight, Donald Trump accusing Senator Ted Cruz of using dirty tricks to win the Iowa caucuses. The accusation coming after Team Cruz spread word on caucus day that Dr. Ben Carson might be dropping out. He insulted Ben Carson by doing what he did to Ben Carson. That was a disgrace. On the day of the caucuses, the Cruz campaign sending supporters this email stating the press is reporting that Carson is taking time off after Iowa and making a big announcement next week. It goes on to say, please inform any Carson caucus goers of this news and urge them to caucus for Ted Cruz. What he did is, is unthinkable. Mm -hmm. He said the man <laughs> has just left the race, and he said it during the caucus. Carson today saying the Cruz move cost him votes, describing what happened when his wife, Candy, showed up at a caucus location. My wife uh, went to a caucus, and the Cruz representative had spoken and told people that I was, in fact, uh, not going to be continuing. And she obviously uh, disabused them of that notion. Cruz has now apologized to Carson, but stands by his campaign's actions. Will you fire or suspend anyone in your campaign for putting out misinformation? No, we're not going to scapegoat anybody. And I would note that the news story that, that our team passed on was true and accurate. CNN reported it, and in fact, Ben did go to Florida instead of New Hampshire or South Carolina. And, and so, you got to understand... Is it a dirty last, trick to confuse question. voters? Is, is it a dirty trick to pass on your news stories? You're in the business. Would, would you think it was a dirty trick if I was forwarding an ABC story? Or is it just a dirty trick to pass on CNN stories? Didn't clarify. Then, just moments after oh, Cruz said that, passing. CNN live on the air saying Cruz was trying to, quote, throw them under the bus. Here are the facts. Dr. Carson's staff told us that he re would return home to Florida to, quote, unquote, take a breath from the campaign before resuming his activities on the campaign trail. CNN saying they never reported anything about a special announcement. Trump now calling for an investigation. All right. Okay, well, I think they'd be detrimental to Carson, not necessarily Trump. Right? Well, uh, so I, it, would, it would be detrimental to both. Trump. Well, both Trump and Carson were complaining about Cruz, but the reason why it was more detrimental to Trump was because him, him, and Cruz were neck and neck. They were pretty much close um, in terms of winning the caucus. Uh, so, well, by but telling I mean, you Carson can make the other argument to about Cruz, you could say if they say Cruz lost and Trump won. But you're saying that the votes, Carson's lost votes would have went, or actually did go no. to Cruz. What well, if they the went to Trump? The Cruz party told everyone, released to the people supporting Carson to vote for Cruz. Right? Told Cruz supporters or told Cruz, what supporters? Cruz supporters, uh, someone in the Cruz organization told I don't know who they told, but I'm assuming they just were trying to announce to the public, everyone saying that if you're supporting for uh, Carson, you know, your vote, um, he's going to be dropped out of the race. Make sure you vote for Cruz. Ted Cruz is the guy you want to vote for. 
So, but who did they send that email to? I'm, I'm wondering I, who I they. Don't, I don't know. Did it, did it go? I didn't get it. I didn't. Get I don't know. Email. Did you get that no, email? I didn't get the email. I don't know who. That's what he's being criticized. Is who? Where was this released to the public? And that's misinformation. That was false. I, something about Ben. Ben Carson said something about getting a new change of clothes. Apparently, he crapped in his pants. I don't know <laughs> why he wanted to take a break from the campaign. Um, that was a little odd. But Carson wanted Car- to take a break. Carson wanted to take a break. Yeah. Well, he had to go lunge a knife. So. He had to lunge a knife to send someone. He had to commit a murder. Yeah, uh, he had to kill somebody uh, in Florida. He, here's Cruz's annoying voice. Well, listen, it, it is no surprise uh, that Donald is throwing yet another temper tantrum, or if you like, yet another trumper tantrum. Uh, it seems his reaction to everything is to throw a fit. I understand that Donald finds it very hard to lose. Donald Trump guaranteed a victory in Iowa, and then he lost. He is calling you a cheater. He's calling you a fraud. (laughs) Listen, Donald's insults get more and more hysterical the more and more upset he gets. I wake up every day and laugh at the latest thing Donald has tweeted. So he wakes up every day and he laughs. (laughs) <laughs> I, you know, that's what I do. I, you know, if if you will, you're trumpet, trumpeters. Trumpet, you know? Well, I'm a Donald Trumpeter. Uh, Donald Trump is a trumpeter. Because he's losing it. He Look, is. We need a commander. He's really machine. losing it. We need Not a somebody Twitterer to compete. Did you hear that? <laughs> what did he say? Not a Twitterer in chief. Not a Twitterer in chief. We need a commander in chief, not a Twitterer in chief. Commander we don't chief. need a commander. We need a Twitterer. Twitter I don't chief. know anyone <laughs> who would be comfortable with someone who behaves this way having his finger on the button. I mean, we're liable to wake up one morning and Donald, if he were president, would have nuked Denmark. <laughs> you know, my girls are five and seven. And I got to tell you, Caroline and Catherine are better behaved. <laughs> Then and what I think we should a presidential do, candidate when you re- have a terrorist <laughs> and he's bombing our United States soil, we need to backfire. Let's and like- we need to <laughs> carpet bomb them to oblivion. In the it, When Ted Roosevelt was managing the World War II effort, we bombed the shit out of everything. So it, don't be comfortable with <laughs> Trump because he might bomb Denmark, but with me... I'm going to fucking carpet bomb those goddamn ISIS members. Hmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Hmm. How does that logic work? Yeah. Anyway, so that was going on. So apparently it wasn't a fair win. Uh, Trump is crying like a baby. He can't accept that he lost. And yeah, he. but that, that would be expected. He, he would look for any loose end out there, and yeah. he found one, and he's going to hold on to it. But yeah. maybe... I don't think anything will come from it. Will they switch the winner? Nah. The, the, the thing is that, okay, politics, you could almost say by nature, by definition, is a fucking dirty uh, job. It's a dirty, yeah. you know, right. it's, you're going to pull dirty tricks. You know, yeah. well, what does he expect? Yeah. You know? I mean, <laughs> to, to I mean, cry. Trump's oh, got to have better dirty tricks. Doesn't than... Trump already do shit like that? Throwing people yeah. under the bus and making fun of them, slandering and making uh, false remarks? Yeah, so, so it's, it's just deal? a game. Yeah. And it isn't 99% of Iowa evangelical anyways? Yeah. Yes, yes. And which which brings me to uh, Cru- Cruz's uh, victory speech, which is, which, is, which is just saturated with uh, religious overtones. Uh, okay. Let me... That's funny. Let's go. He sounds like a pastor. He sounds like a pastor. We are here today standing on the promises of 2 Chronicles 714. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear their prayer from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal their land. (laughs) (laughs) So that was his... Is a triumph speech? I guess, but that is no, he that like wasn't. an evangelical now or a preacher? Yeah. What is that? Our president is now working for the church. Well, but see, that's how he gains so many of his uh, voters or his supporters from uh, appealing to that <laughs> part of the population. 
He just sounds like a motherfucker. Like, you know he's intentionally just deceiving the public. Does he sound genuine when he says that stuff? He well, has like I this mean, snark- how many preachers do you have profiting from these uh, yeah. pyramid schemes? Like, let's go with Joel Austin. I mean, yeah. he was on... Is, uh, it, is he, he on, the same way? Yeah, he was on um, Colbert's show the other day. The Who? Other, uh, Joel Joel Austin. Oh, really? Sell, selling his book. Yeah. <laughs> you should have... Uh, he looks weird. A, Bu- he looks like a buff that. guy with cosmetic surgery. Just his whole face was completely reconstructed. Wait, so he looks a lot different than some yeah. of the stuff we've watched? Yeah. So he's buff now? He's buff and fit and rich and profiting off of his... Uh, um, Evangelicals. Evangelicalism. <laughs> so he, here's uh, someone on YouTube... Uh, took pieces of Cruz's speech, put it together in under three minutes, uh, clipped all the religious um, remarks okay. of Cruz. To God be the glory. Yeah! Our rights come from our creator. Yeah! I want to remind you of the promise of scripture. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning and the Judeo-Christian values that built this great nation. And lifting us up in prayer, lifting this country up in prayer each and every day. We're grateful for the over 150 pastors across the state of Iowa who joined our team to energize people of faith. And Phil Robertson, being my father to preach from the pulpits of your churches. Pastor traveling the country, preaching the gospel. And religious liberty, and religious liberty, with the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel. Morning is coming. Morning is coming. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless you, goddamn motherfucker. <laughs> I like the pulpits. Yeah, the, the pulpits of what? The church? The chirps. Per- What's church. a pulpit? A pulpit. Isn't that the stuff you find in orange juice? The pulp? <laughs> and the pulp. The and pulpits. God bless the pulp. And, and, and God may bless the pulpits of your bowels. <laughs> and drink all that pulp. <laughs> Palpit? Palpable? Able to be touched or felt? Palpable. No, pulpit. No, pulp. it's not. Pulpit. Is it pulpit? pulpit. I think it's pulpit is, is the that orange stuff, isn't it? Oh, pulp. Yeah. Pulpits. Yeah, P U L. A soft, wet, shapeless mass of material. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This world is just bizarre. I mean, these people. Yeah. So, what about uh, the Democrats? Yeah, what's going on with the Democrats? So, grandfather Bernie Sanders. Our grandfather. Lost Everybody's by a Lost by a butt hair. By, by a tiny strand of a butt hair. Do you have any stories art uh, clips on that i i don't have any stories about that uh you can play I, the npr part. Oh yeah okay so I, I just know that um yeah the hillary clinton and, and sanders were close they're pretty much on the same percentage of uh voters. Well, it was 49.9 to 49.6 and then apparently a coin toss is what decided who ultimately won iowa yeah, yeah. Which I thought was stupid and bizarre and just, what? How does that work? Why don't we just flip a coin to determine who's going to be president? Why this whole year-long process? Just flip a damn coin. Could. Right? Yeah. Everyone's equal. Everyone's on the same playing field, so just flip a coin. Yeah, I don't know. It goes back to what we talked about last week, and Paul kind of talked about this, something he read on the internet, the web, he found on the web, mm-hmm. some weird uh, ambiguous, vague, luminous caucus process. Yeah. Oh, the caucus process. Yeah. All right. Well, here's the coin toss fact check. Okay. No coins flips did not win Iowa for Hillary Clinton. Ted Cruz won a clear victory last night in the Iowa caucuses. On the Democratic side, it was the tightest race in history. It was about 4 a.m. when the state Democratic Party said Clinton, Hillary Clinton, would prevail by at least two delegates. But the haggling continued through much of the day. NPR political editor Domenico Montanaro is with us to explain what happened. And Domenico, why is this so hard? I mean, what's the problem with the tally here? Well, Hi, Kelly. First of all, you know, there... Oh, God, another fucking bald-clipped man? 
All right, let's continue. Okay, good. We're never going to see any raw vote when it comes to the Democratic side. We know that they have 171,000 people came out to vote overall, but they don't break that out to like the way the Republicans do to say how many people actually went and voted. What they okay. do do is they have these. What Did are he called? just say doo doo? State delegate equivalents. There's a phrase for you uh-huh. and something that we have to talk about. You're right. Yeah. Tell us what that means. Like, give us like the cliff note version. Well, last night, Iowa Democrats elected 11,000 delegates to local conventions. That's what these 1,683 precinct uh, caucuses were all about. Okay. They'll elect from that 1,400 state delegates later that spring. So all of those numbers that you see last night where people say, oh, Hillary Clinton won by four delegates. It was actually an estimate of the uh-huh. 1,400 state delegates and not that broader universe of 11,000. Okay, so there are also reports that this election was decided basically by a coin toss, that Hillary got six out of six coin tosses. Is this true or false? Partially true and completely misleading. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> she did win six of six uh, um, of these coin tosses that are used to break ties in places where there is an odd number of delegates. So let's okay. say, uh, you know, we walk in and there's 30 people for Hillary Clinton and 30 people for Bernie Sanders and they award five delegates. Well, they get two delegates apiece and they have to figure out what to do with that one left over. They don't split it in a half. They flip a coin. Now, Mm -hmm. she won six of six that we'd heard of through various reports, reporters who are at various caucus sites. I spoke to the Iowa State Democratic Party earlier today and they told me that actually there were more than a dozen of these coin tosses. Uh-huh. That's how close the th- this this election was. And Bernie Sanders won a handful of those. So uh-huh. it's not true that Hillary Clinton somehow won six of six and then won the whole thing. And in fact, those six or those 12 coin tosses that happened were of the broader universe of 11,000, right. not of the 1,400. Totally decisive moments. That's right. So there okay. wound up being like 10 times the, uh, the effectiveness, if you think about that, where you'd have to win like eight or nine of those coin tosses. Okay, the- yeah, I got to stop for one this guy i just can't stand listening to this guy's fucking voice is this ted sure. cruz's little son yeah it's ted <laughs> okay i don't care what they're saying okay the fact is there are coin tosses involved there shouldn't be coin tosses involved in determining anything whatsoever there just shouldn't be any coins why are you tossing coins yeah, uh, they are. But no one should be tossing any fucking coins. I don't care how you want to justify it. Go, oh, go to, can six. you play that um, video lower and the near the bottom? There's a Twitter video. Go ahead and play okay. that. All right, all right, all right. Well, you, well, you see the viewer or listeners won't be able to really see what's going on, but at least they can hear it. Okay. It's kind of weird. This is bizarre. But just play it. Tails. Tails. You got the extra delegate. Did get the extra one? Hillary gets the fifth one. What? Mm-hmm. I thought this was is a point. fucking archaic. Yeah. Like so our official <laughs> delegate for this precinct <laughs> is Hillary Clinton. Oh, my God. Oh my it was very, very close. People. Remember, this is a caucus. It was very, very close. It was called by a coin toss. <laughs> Fuck you and your goddamn fucking coins. This is who's going to decide the next president of the United States. Are you kidding me? Wow. Yep. This is America, people. We live in the 21st century. Uh, we've, we've figured out ways to, d- to create hydrogen bombs, and the best way to determine delegates and candidates for the presidential election is by flipping coins. Yep. Yep. Ah. Uh. So this is all news to uh, news to you, huh? I thought it was a joke, to be honest. No, I thought it was like I thought it was a, like a, it was a joke. I too, thought it was like the un- a report it's... on the Onion. No, a par- uh, just funny news. Oh, I was so close. We had to decide on a to- a toying cost. Toying cost. Toying cost. Toying costing. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so on top of that, I have to play the whole Jeb B- uh, Bush noodle. Yeah, it's 30 seconds. Uh, All right, yeah, he's I'm talking, looking forward to that. All right, he's talking. The video is hilarious, but he's just talking to a group of people and then just listen. So here's my pledge to you. I will be a commander-in-chief that will have the back of the military. I won't trash talk. I won't be a divider-in-chief or an agitator-in-chief. I won't be out there blowharding. 
talking a big big game without backing it up. I think the next president needs to be a lot quieter, but send a signal that we're prepared to act in the national security interests of this country to get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. Did you hear that last part? Please clap. Please clap. Please clap. Please. That is depressing. Depressing, man. <laughs> So you giving imagine giving a speech, and and it's not you know like a motivational speech. You're, he's basically telling the audience, "I'm not going to be you know a guy that's creating a bunch of ruckus, and you know I'm not going to be blowharden. I'm not going to be a blowhard." Wait, wait, what is blowharden? I don't know. Can we look it up? Blowing What's hard, the, blow, it's not blow. out of your nose. Is, it, is that blowing out? Is that blow, out of your butt? Blowharding. Blow, no, I, mean, I think it's a Texas. Blow harden. Blow harden. Harden. Blow harden. Let's see here. What, what does blow hard and mean? I think you just blow. made it up. Blow hard. Oh, blow hard. Blow hard? Isn't that a noun? A blow hard is a person who blusters and boasts in an unpleasant way. So he's using a noun and he's turning it into a verb, which is really annoying. Because during the caucus, all I heard throughout the news was, Who's ready to go caucusing? We're going to go caucusing. That's a pet peeve of mine. That should be a game. What are your pet peeves? So one of them is turning nouns into verbs. <laughs> I'm not going to be blowhard in anything. And I'm going to be the President of the United States of America. Please clap. <laughs> <laughs> How, yeah, who tells their audience? Guy. Who tells their audience to please clap? No one. Unless well, you're Jeff a wet doesn't noodle. really have uh, some ruckus supporters yeah. so he needs to tell them to clap there what's even even jeb bush's supporters they are wet noodles just like him yeah i'm surprised so they don't know when to clap well b- well they don't know because the speech begins where he's saying hey i'm not going to be blowharden i'm not going to be rootin tootin basically he's saying i'm not gonna i don't want you know i'm a humble guy i don't want you guys to clap for me i don't want you to shout and go crazy and yell is he, is he gonna be holy rolling and then he tells them to clap for him he's telling them to make noise you know? Please clap. Please clap. Please clap. Please. Yeah. All right. Poor guy. Yeah. Poor, Noodling it up. Poor noodle. Time so for... So it's about that time. About that time to play it's some... about that time. Play some games because we are running out of time. Uh, okay. So it's a philosophy game. I, I, originally, I had thought maybe we could just spend the whole episode talking philosophy, uh-huh. but you know all this Zika virus thing. I just couldn't help but she couldn't help. I have to inform the public. I need to let them know it that there are other things. Be well going informed. On. Yeah. So this game, uh, let's say I'm going to call it. Would you rather plug in or not plug in the experience machine? Okay. So. Uh, <clears throat> This uh, thought experiment, it's a thought experiment, it's called the Experience Machine, and it was formulated by the American political philosopher Robert Nozick. And if you're interested, you can find it in his book called Anarchy, State, and Utopia, which was published in 1974. He introduces this uh, concept of the experience machine, and he's questioning whether or not pleasure or happiness is the intrinsic good of all things. Is is pleasure the ultimate aim of all human activity? If so, then let's consider the following scenario. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna read the, an excerpt from the book where he talks about the experience machine. Okay. Suppose there is an experience machine that would give you any experience you desired. Super duper neuropsychologists could stimulate your brain so that you would think and feel you were writing a great novel or making a great friend or reading an interesting book. All the time you would be floating in a tank with electrodes attached to your brain. Should you plug into this machine for life, pre-programming your life's desires? Of course, while in the tank, you won't know that you're there. You'll think it's actually happening. Would you plug in? Okay, so the experience machine is a supercomputer that can stimulate your brain and replicate any experience you desire. If you want to know what it's like to climb Mount Everest, travel to outer space, or go back in time and discuss philosophy with Aristotle, or science with Lawrence Krauss's ancestors and their neck jowls, 
the experience machine can make it happen. So your choice is between a simulated life of pure pleasure where every imaginable experience, ambition, and desire would be achieved versus an authentic real life of maybe countless frustrations and disappointments on fulfilled dreams, but with a few successes. Mm. So w- mm. w- would you choose a life permanently plugged into the machine over real life? Okay, I would probably... So think about this, and you can't unplug. Yeah. Once you plug in, you are in. I, I would not plug in. What? And, and I, it's because I don't necessarily agree with your philosopher friend. Ro- Robert Nozick? Robert Nozick. And w- w- what don't you agree about him? Uh, I, I don't think the human mind can be perpetually uh, pleasured uh, constantly. I, I think that the human mind would eventually... Uh, reach a saturation point and wouldn't be able to take uh, all pleasure and no um, sadness or uh, Uh, eventually you'd get tired of it. That's just how humans work. And and I could just give you an example from this week. I mean, I I was in class and I'm taking a training class for work right now and it's just... Oh, no, I'm not going to talk about what we learned because okay. that'll put you to sleep. But, <laughs> you know, I do have to do a presentation and I took a quiz and it's not like my life is over because of this class, but I was feeling down because I didn't think I did well in the presentation. I didn't think I, and I didn't do well in the quiz. And then the whole day I was just down. And then the next day I did well in the quiz and had a chance to play basketball because I wasn't playing basketball for a while, and then I was up. Mm-hmm. So, and it was – so I think life is peaks and valleys, and, and you learn from your experiences, and you get pleasure from when you learn from those experiences. If you're just plugged into some pleasure machine, you get the pleasure from accomplishing something, not from just uh, you know like doing, having an experience. Yeah. Please clap. Please. Okay. All right. Interesting. Interesting. So you need a little pain, disappointment, frustration, obstacle in order to appreciate and fully understand pleasure. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. So if you're plugged into this pleasure machine, it would be logically impossible to even really fully appreciate the pleasures of certain you, you, okay, let, I guess you could, you'd still experience pleasure, mm-hmm. but not to its full extent, I, I suppose is what I'm saying. Okay. But you wouldn't be able to, okay, so, but in, in real life, you know, you wouldn't be able to experience climbing Mount Everest. Not that that's something you would like to do, but something you would love to do, but you just can't do it. You know that well, you won't let, be able to do say, it. Well, let's say, okay, let's look at that. If, if, Say you have all, you've kind of thought about climbing Mount Everest, um, and but you just don't have the balls to do it, or you just don't. You're kind of scared a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, you yeah you you are gonna have to find peace with the fact that you're never gonna ever experience the highs of that pleasure of climbing Mount Everest, mm-hmm. and that's unfortunate, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to that age old. Is it better to have loved and lost or is it better to never have lost or mm-hmm. something like that whatever the how bush would put it yeah. please clap please please clap all right well do you, is there anything valuable to you that you would miss if your life took place entirely in the machine uh like your family, friends, and I mean, you those could, sort of things. Or you could still program. Hobbies. You could still program anything. You can. You, you're, you could still experience your family, friends. Um, but then you're. You're. But you're saying, you're. You're just talking with respect to pleasure. You're not talking about, right? Uh, sort of what you see in the movie of The Matrix, right? Yeah, I mean, it's more or less similar to The Matrix, but you can modify yeah. the machine. Yeah, but I mean, what your philosopher friend is saying is just pleasure. Just He's not pleasure. About just pleasure. Your whole le- life. Right. No disappointments. You'll always be successful. You always get what you want. 
Yeah, um, I, there won't I be... would find that the human mind brain would not work that way anyways. Okay. You'd eventually um, exhaust your pleasure nodes. For, for me, I would plug in uh, with a few modifications. I would, I would program the machine so that I do occasionally experience pain, discomfort, so that I can actually fully appreciate no, the No, that's cheating. What? That's, that's, that's cheating? What, what, yeah, are you modify? No. Why not? No, it's a, that, pro, it's a taking, super duper no, computer. No, that's... that's Why that's couldn't mobile. I? Why can't I the program right, it? Just, I'm a programmer. Please clap. Please I can, clap. Please clap. <laughs> I don't see why I couldn't it's modify it. It's all or nothing. You can't just modify it. Well, you know what? Then I'm going to plug in anyway then because I, I want to experience Greek philosophy. I want to be able to travel uh, Brazil and be you know, bitten by mosquitoes and have no, them. No, that's not pleasure. That, that, you no, but the pleasure machine is going to make me think that when I'm being bit by mosquitoes, I'm in, being induced to experience Tremendous so, amounts so of pleasure. This, so this this mosquito, instead of feeling pain, <laughs> I'm gonna feel ple- you with pleasure. Yeah, my brain's gonna explode. It's gonna do the opposite of shrinking. It's gonna explode with so much pleasure. See that? Okay, that's fine. That's good. Uh huh. <laughs> no, I mean, and then yeah. when I fart, it's a pleasurable experience. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I just don't agree with Robert Nosick. Yeah, no, knows he doesn't know. Well, Robert would agree. He he wouldn't plug in. Um. He he was just trying to show that there's more to life than yeah. pleasure. Uh, we want to live an authentic life. We want real, genuine human accomplishments. Like you said, you know, we want to build real relationships it, with people. We want to experience real frustrations, major disappointments. We want to be a certain kind of real person. I, I don't just, know if you want to experience. Uh, lows and disappointments right. and being depressed. But let me let me put a, a, a another example. I think it was a NPR story, but jazz musicians who are able to uh, improvise when they're playing the blues, mm-hmm. um, it sounds sad to other people, right? If you're playing something a really sad song or melody. But if you scan that musician's brain, he's actually experiencing pleasure. Hmm. Interesting. So that, that's what, so one of the studies. While while the jazz musician is playing some blues, he's euphoric. He's in a, yes. in a pleasurable state. And then people listening to the song are mm-hmm. not. And why would you think that is? Why would the audience be? Well, why would the musician be happy that he's playing sad music? Well... Th- this maybe he loves music and he loves playing music. <clears throat> he enjoys playing the music. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's... I mean, I, I think you get you get pleasure. You, there, it's an outlet, right? I think that like, the point of the study was it's an outlet. Right. You're, you're the reason he is able to play a sad music is a sad melody is because he experienced that sadness, and in order for him to come up with an outlet or to uh, uh, come out of it mm-hmm. much better is through that music. Okay. Well, you know. <clears throat> Please clap. Please. Uh, when, when I'm teaching philosophy and I'm talk, talking about, you know, things that might make students depressed or uncertain and anxious, you know, about the world being indifferent you know, there's no God or whatever. When we talk about those possibilities, I'm in, I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a good time there teaching. You, you know, maybe you want people you you get joy out of making <laughs> other people depressed. <laughs> I'm a that sadomasochist. Could, could there you go. I get thrills <laughs> seeing my students suffering from anxiety. Yep. But, okay. Uh, All righty. Another fun-filled week. Fun-filled week. Wrapping up. Yeah. Without Paul. Where in the world is Paola Felice? Where in the world is Paola Felice? (laughs) Gita. Thank you, Gita, for that wonderful happy birthday tune. But yeah. Alright, alright. So this was a. Sign off, or you still remember it? Yeah, I think I remember it. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. I'm ready to sign off whenever you are. Okay, I think uh, I'm I'm good. Okay, well, thanks, Stephen, uh, Geraldine Felice, for uh, joining me in our <laughs> fruitful Geraldine? discussion. I think it's just Ger- <laughs> Geraldine's your Gerard. new name, Ger- Geraldine. It's just Gerard. And thank you, listeners out there in Brazil, for listening to our show, and everyone else, of course, we love you. So don't be scared of the Zika. Don't be scared of the Zika. It's just bullshit. Um, mm. Don't believe the media. Understand the sources uh, of what's going on. Do your research. Dig deep into the heart of the internet to find out the truth or different versions of uh, one and the same event. No one knows anything, but definitely do your research to find out what's true, what's not true. Ultimately, you have to take the leap of faith and make your own determination. Uh, Please clap. Right, please clap. <laughs> Get one clap. One clap there, and that was Saul. Uh, there you go. There's thank you. Boo! Get him off the stage, this anti-scientist. <laughs> uh, that was that was another thing I wanted to talk about the ninth planet, but maybe we can do that next week. Okay, keep pushing it back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, you can follow us on Twitter, ASP Stuff Radio, or send us an email, yeah. ASP Stuff Radio at gmail dot com. Uh, with all this uh, Zika serum in my brain. This is ASP Stuff Radio signing off. We are all stuffed up. Please clap.
Oh,